Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a few cards, nine cards that have gone up in price recently and discuss why they went up in price and what similar cards may see a trend up. So Saviors of Kamigawa, this was a very old set. This set was not open very much. At Radio Shack, there was always this deal. It was free booster packs for $10 and my friends and I in high school when we got a car, so it must have been after 16 or 17, we would go buy packs from Radio Shack and just draft of them. And this was one of these sets. It was a great time. And the set itself, I've always enjoyed it. I would like to return to it. I know that's a very... The set is not looked at fondly. It wasn't that powerful as my card mechanics go. But it did have a ton of legendary creatures. And that is what's propping up the price now. Legendary creatures are very good in EDH. They give you flexibility in terms of whether or not you want to use them as commanders. And overall, because they're legendary, that is not a down... There's no downside to that in EDH since you can only play one card. One of each card. So the Truth Seeker has hit almost $10. Not something I would have imagined when I opened this uh, in probably 10th or 11th grade, probably 11th grade. But here we here we are today, the, almost a $10 card. Next, let's move on to Predict. Continues its climb upwards. It is now a $5.48 card. I do own many copies of this because I own pretty much many copies of any uncommon from older sets. And it is a beautiful piece of artwork, uh, just gorgeous. Uh, the Europe price is only a dollar still, so it has been taking up a little bit, but not as fast as the US price. It sees play in Legacy Miracles, which is, I believe, a tier two deck now. So this card slots in, although you don't have Sensei's Divining Top, you have to play a more flexible game. And this one, this card is not bad in that deck and it's not bad in EDH where you have control over the top of your library. Overall, old cards that draw cards or you know, old cards that allow you to do stuff at instant speed involving card mechanic draws will always be valuable and will always be something that you look at and there's tons of them. In Ice Age, there's a pseudo Brainstorm no one really cares about, and that is an interest. It's not as powerful as Brainstorm, but should Brainstorm ever be banned or restricted, yes, that card will spike like crazy. So next, we take a look at Future Sight. Uh, Future Sight has this uncommon, and this uncommon has gone up in price. I wanted to revisit it. The reason it has gone up in price was the banning of Gitaxian Probe. Once Gitaxian Probe was banned in Modern, it just shot to $8 and has pretty much held steady. The reason I wanted to revisit this card was mainly to see if its price could hold and its price does hold. Unique abilities, anytime you can do something for the cost of life, but not for tempo or not for mana and not for card disadvantage, then you have a good card. When this first came out, this was a quarter card, maybe 15 cents. Uh, we didn't really, I didn't really understand why anyone would play it. But then you had the Living End deck, which kind of made sense. And now you have every other deck in Modern, which is Death Shadow. So losing the life is actually a bonus and getting stuff in your graveyard is very good too. Now let's talk about Planar Gate. I want to talk about in particular, rares from Legends or Arabian Nights. There are some really bad rares, but they have all been going up. Planar Gate is not the best. It costs six, pay up to two less than required uh, whenever casting a summon spell. Is this the best use of six mana? Is this even going to see play in EDH? No, but it is a collector's item because it is a rare from Legends. And there are still a ton of cheap, interesting, 
rares from Legends and older sets, Arabian Nights, that are under 5 or $6, I don't feel like they will last for much longer. When I look at these prices, so this card was, let's say, $8 until recently. The market is extremely volatile, but it's trending up. And I do not see these getting cheaper because they are old. Many of them are on the reserve list. And they're just not going to... They are collector's items now. And as many of my friends have sold their collections, they have not sold stuff like Ivory Tower. Ivory Tower is has been reprinted in a set. I'm op absolutely positive I have seen it in white border. So let me go ahead and pull up what set it was reprinted in. Um, oh, Ivory Tower is actually a biblical song of Solomon. Yeah, I, I'm seeing the white border version. Oh, it was printed in revised. Huh, that's interesting. I did not know it was printed in revised. Does it have any other copies? Uh, it has a fourth edition copy from the vault copy and a revised copy Oh, revised, it was a rare, but it's only like $0.75, 75 cents right now. This is what people are going to keep. Uh, my friends have recently sold their entire collections. They have no interest in standard and none in modern right now. Uh, they've kept most of their legacy decks. Very few of them are selling legacy cards. And even fewer of them are selling cards from Legends, Arabian Nights, cards like this. Because they like to keep it as a collection. Um, buying those cards from them is impossible. They don't need money, so they don't need to sell it. They're only selling the cards. They're selling everything at fire sale prices, right? But they won't move on these cards. Okay, next cards we will talk about is Commander 2016. It is a very interesting set that, as I've told you, since we are now now in Commander 2017 territory, being released in August, the overall commons, uncommons, unique cards to the set have trended up, including this card. I don't see this trend going down. Commander 2016 was a very, very good set. Uh, not every Commander deck, or not every year of Commander was good. I think 2015 was among the weakest in terms of value, but 2016 was really good. What will 2017 bring? We don't actually know. The, the EDH Dragon deck looks fantastic, but there's still a lot of cards that we don't publicly know. Uh, the person who's posting it probably knows it, and if they were smart, they probably can make a little bit of pocket change specking on it. So, I like it. Like if you can find these decks in Walmart and Target and Barnes and & Nobles, now's the time to buy them. All right. Now let's talk about some of the most beautiful cards, cards in my opinion, that we don't see very often. And these are the full art cards. The textless cards. Uh, I think they are by far, in my opinion, this is what expeditions should be like. Just lots of artwork, very little text, have it be iconic enough that like you, all you have to do is read the title and you know what it does. I have seen a general interest in these cards now. I do own a lot of them, and they are some of my favorite cards for the artwork. But Rampant Growth is an example of something where every one of these cards is trending up. There's not that many copies of them anymore, and compared to a standard set like Amaket, there are very few copies of it. The reward system is gone. So when you are looking for these cards, they are hard to find now. And as trade bait, they are fantastic for trading. Now, let's move on to some card that we haven't talked about in a while, and it's been trending up as of late. Underground C from Revised is the cheapest version. You can look at Unlimited, and it's much more expensive. You can look at Beta Alpha, obviously way more expensive. Uh, revised is the cheapest version that you need to play Legacy. It's $300 or exactly, well, not exactly, but for a playset, you would need $1,200 plus, $1,300 for a playset just to get your foot in the door of Legacy. It's still a problem, 
uh, to players who want to play Legacy, yes, you can proxy these up, and I don't think anyone's going to mind because they're just happy to have someone to play with. Uh, overall, this is not something that I would want to hold, and that's why I included it here, although it's trending up, and historically, as you can see from this graph, the dual lands have done fantastic value-wise. I just don't know if there's that much more demand for it. Like I am very, I would hesitate to put three hundred and forty dollars into something into a single card. Now, if it was a bulk collection, I am buying. I'm more interested in bulk nowadays. You can find this in bulk anywhere you go. It's a four dollar card. No one who was playing it and playing Chase knew it was a four dollar card. Even recently, it was just a dollar. If you have plain chase, you will have lots of slivers. Now, if I believe this, it's it's fifty fifty in my opinion. This is a tribal deck. Remember, this tribal deck was extremely strong. It has been throughout Magic's history of uh, Legion block. The Legion onslaught block had a lot of these. The scourge, and then they were originally in the Tempest block. And now they made they make appearances from time to time, and even was in one of the core sets, right? I remember Might Sliver was one of the better promos. If you believe in it, and it's a gamble, it's, I think it's going to be a 50-50 gamble. Then, and even if you predicted it correctly, without the deck list, you don't know what's being reprinted. This is an interesting investment uh, in terms of quantity. Uh, you always have to be concerned about quantity. It's something that no one who speculates on cards, I've noticed they don't mention that. Accumulating a large amount of cards of a single type is very difficult. It is unlikely for you to find a buyer who has more than 20 copies of this old card. Even if you found that buyer and it was turned out to be Channel Fireball or Star City Games, their average price will be much higher than the lowest price. So you are stuck with, should I buy 20 copies at a much higher price or should I just buy these individual copies maybe from 15 different vendors? Some of them having one, some of them having two, and then possibly paying shipping on all of them. It's difficult accumulating a lot of them unless you know way beforehand, before the spike. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.